when they see a reversal, uh, they automatically think uh, this is the bottom, right? And the one thing we've always talked about is nobody knows what a bottom is until major levels get tested. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of uh Monday update show. Hope everybody is doing well. Again, hopefully everybody had a, a great weekend. So uh, let's talk about the day. Pretty quiet session today. I, I think everybody uh, could, uh, you know, pretty much attest to that. Uh, majority of the day, uh, you know, index is down. The Dow was down two, three hundred points uh, all day. The Nasdaq was going from positive to negative, and figure after last week's, um, you know, almost four percent decline uh, in the Nasdaq, you know, you kind of wanted to see what happens next. And you know, today was basically a session. It felt like an inside day all day, and the way it ended, it wound up being an inside day all day. And one of the clues, well, one of the things I, I think a lot of new traders, when they see a reversal, uh, they automatically think. Uh, this is the bottom, right? And the one thing we've always talked about is nobody knows what a bottom is until major levels get tested. And obviously, this is a level we, start, we talked about uh, during the weekend update. And this is the level that until, uh, in my opinion, I, I think they need to test at least successfully once again to be able to go higher. But the most important part is the difference between uh, stocks moving up and stocks moving higher. The most basic clue of technical analysis is stocks need to take out the previous day's highs. The ETFs need to take out the previous day's highs. And if you look at uh, all the major indexes, for example, the QQQs, right? Friday's high was 335, today's high was 329. As much as a nice little reversal today into the close, keep this in mind, this reversal happened after three o'clock, right? I, I, I already logged off. I think a lot of people logged off. The, the market was pretty much dead for the first four hours a day. There was like three natural pivots. We'll talk about that in a second. But it, it feels like, it, again, it feels like the, the complete uh, structure of what a trending market is. And again, since we closed below the 50 day moving average, uh, this is again, week, uh, let's see, the day 10, right? Day 10, day 11. Uh, of all that's going on. Besides, look, is it possible, like we talked about in the video uh, on the weekend, is it possible to get a you know a couple of dead cat bounces? Absolutely. Again, if you if you reference uh, everything since that initial uh, tear down of that support on January the fourth, we had a we had a bunch, right? We had a bunch of uh, moves to the upside, and like I, like I said, no matter how bad or good the market is, you're always going to have. Uh, moves in the opposite direction. So I, I don't think anything got resolved today. Uh, for the majority of day, you had a, a very big disconnect. Some stocks were weak, some stocks were strong. Um, I, I think for, for an active market to be structurally, organically good, everything needs to trade on, on one side of the market. You can't have uh, Microsoft strong, Facebook weak. You can't have Apple strong, Tesla weak. You know what I mean? They all have to trade as a tribe. And the, the biggest clue when you see a big disconnect, that means it's like a drowning victim. This is kind of where we are. We're underneath uh, the water and it's like a drowning victim being able to get a little bit of air before they're putting back down. And again, the, the reason why the market turned around today and you can see is why all these lines, I think a lot of new traders starting to realize how important uh, these lines are. The, the, all, all the cues did today was hold uh, right above uh, the Bollinger Band, and, and that's a very, very important part of it. And, and again, is it possible we get a dead cat bounce back into the five-day moving average? Yeah, I, I think we can. You know, I think we can. Personally, again, uh, I have some longs I'm watching. Um, you know, I have maybe some some dead cat bounces like an Amazon, uh, NVIDIA, uh, Tesla's kind of trapped still in the middle of the range. And obviously, the big story today was the announcement that Elon Musk is taking uh, Twitter public for $44 billion. I think it works out to that initial number of 5420 uh, they talked about. So uh, Twitter is going uh, private. Again, I don't know what Elon uh, has in store for um, store for uh, Twitter, but again, we'll see, right? We're all on it. Uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see some, what, what positive changes uh, that could possibly be done to it. Um, but more important is the dynamics of the market and the stocks that are weak to continue to be weak. Uh, Netflix, uh, for example, we're seeing a lot of $200 
uh, $200 puts uh, for the week uh, for the weeklies coming in. We saw some 190s coming in. We saw some July 165s coming in. Uh, a name like, for example, like a ISRG today. Again, a little dead cat balance after this atrocious move on earnings Friday. You know, I'm still watching this thing. This thing's <laughs> this thing's just again when when you, you when you go down, you know, when you go down 60 points and you rally three. Not exactly screaming bull markets. I'm still definitely watching this thing in the next couple of days. Maybe he finally confirms his bottom channel here and has this next 15, 20 point move down as well. But the most important part is, again, when you're looking at charts today, you'll see even the stocks that reverse, there's just no room, right? Look at all these stocks. You know, you have Apple, right? You had a dead, you know, you had a nice hammer here. Listen, is, again, like I said, is it possible to get a dead cat bounce back to the five day moving average? Yeah, why not? You know, why not? And we'll, we'll obviously be watching. Uh, for these names, but the point is, look how much supply there is. And the only way Apple's gonna get above supply is if when it comes out with earnings and tomorrow uh, starts up again, right? We have technology earnings uh, starting up again tomorrow. Let me just give you guys kind of a, uh, let's see what tomorrow is. We got uh, we got Microsoft, Google. Uh, we saw some pretty, pretty aggressive bets on Microsoft to the downside today as well, but uh, Microsoft, Google tomorrow, GE, Visa, uh, Chipotle, you got JetBlue, Triple M, UPS, Pepsi, uh, Texas Instruments. But Wednesday, you got Boeing, Facebook, PayPal, Ford, Qualcomm, TDOC, Pinterest, Spotify, Potato, Potato. And then Thursday is obviously going to be the big ones. You got Amazon, you got Apple, you got Roku, you got Intel, you got Gilead, Robinhood, right? Market leaders. So yeah, we're set up this week. And obviously, again, like I said on the video over the weekend, um, I, I think we'll get a lot more cloudy. Again, for the bull case, they need these stocks to beat their numbers. They need these stocks to blow away these numbers because again, there is a lot of supply. And for the bulls to make any type of really aggressive noise that's more sustainable than like a last hour turnaround is again, they have to slowly but surely get above the five day, reclaim the 10, reclaim the 20. And again, like we talked about in the video, the 347 supply needs to be uh, needs to be reclaimed. If that happens, then yes, you can start swing trading again. You can start putting on risk. But the 50-day, what was the support, now a supply needs to get back on. So pretty quiet day. Uh, again, pretty quiet day. Like I said, like two, three, three natural, maybe it was four, uh, four natural pivots today. Um, I, again, it felt like, just to put it in layman's terms, on Friday, when you saw a thousand point decline on the Dow, right, and like a 350 point decline, it almost felt like, you guys know what a volatility halt is? You know how like when a stock has news or something like that, it just like, it's like they halt it for, you know, for to kind of curb the aggression. That's what it felt like today for the first like four or five hours a day. It's like they almost stopped the market from going lower. At one point the Dow was down 300. So, you know, 500 point turnaround is nothing to sneeze at. But I think a lot of people were uninterested in this. And that's the most important part. Remember, it, it's all about perception. It's all about how you handle news and how you handle uh, the technical landscape. And right now, that's all it is. Right now, we still haven't taken out the previous day's high. Obviously, if we if we are going to dead cat bounce tomorrow, and that's a very, very big if, but if we are going to dead cat bounce tomorrow, we have to at least take out and start building above the 330 level on the queues for a possible move to this 335, 336 level on the five-day supply. Like, I think that would be a big victory for the bulls. If the bulls can't reclaim today's highs, then again, this will start another series of lower highs and just start resuming the sell-off below this uh, 322 area, which I believe then you will see this 317 test which is the double bottom from January, excuse me, March uh, the 14th. So that's it. That's pretty, you know, pretty basic stuff. When you look at the spies, uh, when you look at the spies, um, you know, again, same thing. You, you had this kind of like, you had this bounce. I just don't even, even know what area this was. But again, you had this bounce after a pretty, you know, pretty ugly decline from this 450 level. Again, can the, can the spies get back to this 435 area in the next couple of days? Yeah, sure. Why not? Right. But just, just always remember, bounces bounces in a sell market environment those are the hardest days because a bounce can happen for two points a bounce can happen for 20 cents or a bounce can happen for 15 seconds and then start turning around again when you don't have a safety net and your safety net is the previous day's low the hardest days that any trader is going to is going to experience is a green day in a sell market environment and that's kind of where we are but again beggars can't be choosers again life gives you lemons you make lemonade so let's talk about uh today's uh, today's action, like I said, pretty slow day today. Um, 
Amazon, you know, look, Amazon, you know, went down 20, 30 points. 2872 if it builds below can flush. I mean, there wasn't a lot of aggression today. There really wasn't. You know, Amazon went down to what? 2840s. Again, it saved on the Bollinger Band, uh, which kind of got it back up here. Uh, Intuit, it, it was impossible, at least for me to trade. It just went down like 10, literally at the open. 442.70 if it builds below can flush. You can see... A pretty big move. If you got, if you got it somehow, God bless. I wasn't. I, I mean, look at this move here. Just like right from, you know, right from the word go. Ten right up from the word go. So if you got some, God bless. Uh, way, way too thin. TTD never got there. Uh, eBay just sat there all day. Uh, AMAT only went down like less than a dollar. Uh, Netflix got hit, right? Netflix definitely got hit. They took out the earnings lows. They started seeing the 200 weekly puts come in. Uh, Netflix was, you know, nice move. Nothing, you know, nothing crazy, but nice move here. So you had this. Here's the 210 level, right? Here's the 210 level. And it took out this whole area and it went all the way down to 204 and change. I have to assume if the market resumes any weakness, this will be the first one to get hit. You know, nice little move there. NVIDIA, uh, 196.50, this is to the upside. This was, there was actually a couple of upside pivots. Uh, 196.50 needs to build for cash flow. NVIDIA ran up a couple of points. Uh, Amazon, 28.97, 2900. Could give some cash flow and initially ran up about 12 to 15 points and then later in the day put up a 40 dollar candle and i said look nice pop take your money right take your money again when you're trading to the upside in a sell bias market you don't have a lot of time to kind of sit there and and, and react you have to just take your money on the way up uh you know 207 on, on deck punch a shot at 200 went down uh to 204 so that's it you had a you had a, you had a dead cat bounce nice little reversal the scoreboard is the scoreboard uh personally i thought this was a very quiet day is it possible the market buys you know sometime for the next couple of days and just kind of go sideways yeah it's possible but again you never know and that's the greatest part about it is and the most important thing you have to remember especially as a new trader you, again you're not trading because the, the market is open you're trading because you're getting value value doesn't mean you're trying to squeeze out 50 cents out of netflix value means you have a big measure of potential if the stock confirms that level it has a high probability of getting there. Trading for the sake of trading, all you're doing is you know, burning mental equity and all you're doing is burning money for absolutely no reason. It's like for you poker players, imagine holding a 2-7 offsuit. All you do is playing 2-7 offsuit and you're putting, putting your money in the middle of the table while you know eventually you're gonna wind up getting kings, queens, and aces. Why not wait, right? Why not wait for those queens, kings, and aces? It's not a race, it's not a popularity contest, you're not doing it for the likes. You're doing it because you're trying to grow your capital on a nice organic move. And again, at the end of the day, it's all about longevity. Guys, have a great night. God bless. And I will see you all tomorrow.